Amish yeah. was mm. that they I were figured... better than the Quakers, right? You'd always coveted barns. They, I do right. like barns, you know. In the Amish versus Quaker uh, rap battles of the early yeah. 90s. That's right. Like, like, like the Pennsylvania Dutch, which aren't Dutch. What? They're not even Dutch? No, they're Amish. They just call them the Pennsylvania well, Dutch. Well, Deutsch, like German. Yeah. German Dutch. Oh, that counts. Like Deutschland. <laughs> you know. That's what counts. Back, back when Dutch meant a lot of people, including Mark Claire. Uh, we had a really good... Remember Pin Dutch Meats? Yeah, I do. In South Florida, we had this mm-hmm. awesome meat place, Pin Dutch Meats. You get like all the kind of meats you'd want. Did that get wiped out for Atlantis? Or it was right by Atlantis, right? It was Near on... there, but no. Yeah, no, that's yeah. still there. Yeah, we had a Six Flags over Atlantis theme park, which was kind of really awesome, but like just not long for this world because it's just so much South Florida real estate. Yeah, it became a mini mall. Remember they had that big, huge electronics store that was like amazing, but you knew that wasn't going to last? Oh, was like God. Hot... Amazing Universe or something like yes. that. Yeah. Incredible yeah. Universe. Incredible yeah. Universe. Yeah. Who needs the internet to buy electronics? Come here. Exactly. I rollerbladed yeah. over there and I bought, a, I bought a CD. Y'all are making me sad for fries. Oh, yeah. Dude. Fries eventually went out. It, it soldiered on longer. Hell of a lot longer than Incredible Universe did. Incredible Universe yeah. was dead before Y2K. It was so weird walking through the last days of Fries. Like, like I, 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 I just found myself in the area, walking around, two thirds empty shelves and 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 one hundred percent dead souls. Yeah, walking around. Well, did they announce Biden's yours? Because the rest of us, we never got the announcement. It just boom, we're closed. Uh, no, they 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 said just boom, we're closed. But you know, you couldn't be there. Oh yeah, and, and towards not- that. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I mean, it's like it's, it's, the press release was, uh, "Come on in." So I guess you got the press release. Yeah. <laughs> We're dying. Oh. There's the sign. The warning sign for electronic stores is when you look by the checkouts, they start putting candy and all those really crappy little gadgets, like you know, bottle openers, yeah. and belts. And stuff. Like when I see that, I'm like, "Ooh, ooh!" Somebody like, what if we sold useless crap? Like, you know, uh, a, I don't know, like a 7-Eleven sort of stuff, but without the booze and everything else that people go there and, you know, in 50 times the floor space. Yeah. That was the end of, of uh, uh, Blockbuster when they started selling a bunch of random City. shit. Yeah. Yeah. They're all uh, like, come for the empty city. shelves, stay for the jujubes. There's a home goods by our place that is very obviously an old Circuit City, and it makes me happy whenever I see it. With like the red, the red. It was, yeah, it, you know, they, they painted column. over it, so it's not red anymore, but it is just that gigantic, like unmistakable, uh, 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 you know, spherical yeah. square shape. Uh, 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 yeah. the, the pre iPhone plug. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see, you've seen the website, like things that used to be Pizza Hut? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the most iconic. Yeah. Pizza Hut, you reclaim all of them. You should make them, give them back. Those in the Alamo style dance. Taco Bells. With yes. The big port, port uh, windows. Portholes. Port, port Portholes. Port, 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 port tents. Port, no, all right. Port tents. All right. You guys Our chat, <laughs> chat also bought a McLaren hat. In the chat, oh, how much Logan. did you pay? I uh, can't see because of the blur. How much did you pay? Don't tell us, Bryce. I want to hear what they paid. Okay. I want to see if you got <laughs> if I got ripped off. <laughs> yeah, you got ripped. Yeah, did some dude in the parking lot. Well, like, it, that's this is Logan, our friend Logan, who who I met up on on Saturday during the race. No, so, uh, he had too tell much. Us, Logan, we need to know the price. No, no, dollar he's amount. Ashamed. Dollar amount. He's ashamed. He's, he's ashamed. ashamed. And it's a We're dollar amount. Announce- and by the way, he <laughs> should be. He should be based on what Bryce told us that hat cut. Yeah, the cost is going to come out. We want to see your cost. <laughs> We're not going to judge. Listen, I am surrounded by stupid stuff, so. All right, JDS is guessing $1. Logan says $100 plus. Yeah, that, let, let's, let's leave it there. I'll leave it there. It's a it's a cool hat. This is the live. It's Monaco. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's 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 great uh, uh, for an extra hat that you'd wear on the yacht if your other hat blows. <laughs> that's that's the right price for that hat. All right. All right. I, I'm all for buying sorts of logos. Hey, oh, look at that. Hey. Oh. Well, who wears a mask, cuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Not me, because of the knot they put into this thing. <laughs> oh, <so>. no! <laughs> if I die of COVID, it's because Justin's mask. It couldn't yeah, be the die. All right, you guys want to do show? Ready, ready. Yeah. All right, Angel, I'll count you in for weird things in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen, uh, today's a very interesting day. Why is that? If you're following Tesla. Yeah. Now, Tesla, now that's the inventor, right? Yeah, Nikola yes, Tesla, Tesla. He was a guy, he died. Um, that's Holy pretty much all we crap. know about him. Tesla is up 13% today. Yeah, big, oh. big, big, uh, big run on big news as Hertz announcing that they are going to order 100,000 Tesla. Criminy, criminy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, related, <laughs> Andrew. Uh, Andrew Maine found out that he has to wait till August for his Model Y. For no oh. reason. <laughs> this this makes a lot of se- does this make a lot of sense? Hertz and all the rental car companies do go through a lot of inventory every year. They so, maintain it pretty well. So getting the electric cars, which have a lower maintenance cost, would probably is, be helpful. This is also uh, uh, part of an initiative by Hertz to move to an all electric fleet eventually. Uh, it's it really is a sign of the times because I would imagine that they would probably in a different world probably make a move like this in a, in a, in a smaller capacity even sooner than they have now. But they're really really tied in with a lot of those auto manufacturers. They get sweetheart deals on a lot of them. So I feel like this is a sign of the times when they would even get into a a, a deal with Tesla. Uh, so on top of that, as as somebody, uh, uh, Justin, you could probably speak to this as well as as a road warrior. Uh, like uh, the worst part about renting a car is always saying no. I decline to prepay the gas, and I don't want to yeah, mm-hmm. find a. You know, it's always a pain in the butt. To Just plug it in at pay. home. Uh, no, no, no. You, you, you probably don't even. I have guess they to. can do it themselves. I, yeah, exactly. You just bring it back you know, as long as you make it back. And I would, I would. Oh, guess. I'm sure they'll charge you. For oh, they'll that. charge you. They'll, <laughs> they'll charge you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If a five dollar fill up under... fee is a five dollar fee. Oh, if anything, they're going to know more that I that I definitely came in from beyond ten miles away to to charge my my thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, uh, but that being said. Maybe it'll be less than, than what they charge for gas because it is a little bit more of a hassle to get gas. And if they have a charging station there, then, then they can do it. But uh, look, I, I don't think that this is necessarily uh, any kind of game changer for the, the, the regular ordering. You know, like I, I just got a rental car for this trip to Virginia that I'm doing uh, at the beginning of next week. And uh, that is something that will be a long time before I get a fully electric vehicle. Probably be a long time before I get a hybrid. But every, like when I last went to South Florida, which is known for its uh, uh, humble origins and how much everybody wants to blend in, when you come into Fort Lauderdale and you rent a car, the first thing that the guy who's snapping gum and wearing three gold chains tells you is, so, I mean, what, what, what do you want? What do you want, Benz? Beamer? <laughs> like, yeah. Because that's what people who fly into Fort Lauderdale want to do is get a fancy I'm car. Sure. Yeah. I think in that capacity, that's where you're going to see it. You are going to see the upgrade to a Tesla for blank uh, uh, kind of price and bringing that to a, you know, a, a, a high volume uh, uh, outfit like Hertz is, is a big deal. And, and it's a gigantic deal for Tesla, which, I mean, look, they won. Uh, Andrew, you, you were saying, uh, I think you said to me via text, that the, the, uh, uh, the big short guy who had been uh, holding against Tesla for a while finally tapped out. Yeah, that well, guy's also Batman. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Super talented. Yeah. Uh, and Newsies. Um, Michael Burry, he, he, he clarified, said that, like, oh, it's not we had, I, we had, I don't know. He does finance stuff that's beyond me, whatever. The, the headlines were out saying that he has a big short against Tesla, and then he, you know, then it's sort of, he's no longer shorting, but he said, well, I wasn't really shorting them as much as some finance. And I, he's a smart guy, smarter than me. Um, but yeah, remember like two years ago, you know, Eric Berger pointed us on Twitter, like, what happened to the people that were counting Teslas in parking lots and insisting that they weren't making them and that there was some conspiracy that like, uh, they're hiding them and stuff. And like one of the gossip columns, um, 
uh, Crazy Days and Nights was like trying to, it was basically trying to say that he was using stories about um, DeLorean, you know, John DeLorean and trying to imply that Elon was trying to do like cocaine trades and stuff like this to no, make Jesus. Tesla. It was the <laughs> craziest, dumbest thing you ever read, um, which is like... <laughs> Uh, that's not, that's not how you do run a car company in this day and age. Not to say that anything crazy could not be involved, but, um, and it's this, insane. this will, this is a move that will trickle down, right? The, re, the rental car companies seed the used car market after a few years with late model cars. If these are not, if these are anything better than like specifically designed for Hertz to throw away, then in a couple of years, these electric cars will make it out to the kind of, to used car buyers. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm getting the why, and I'm my the price I'm getting as a trade in is about what I paid for my my three, yeah, uh, mm. three years ago. Uh, again, that's true of a lot of cars right now in in the cars. Yes. Just Tesla, right yeah, now because right. there's a shortage of cars. Let me make that clear. But yeah, no, now, I have now a three... is now now is the time to upgrade your car uh, uh, if yeah. you are if you are thinking about a lot it, of if you are going to get a lot. Uh, uh, in 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 return for it, yeah. I'm like, all right, well, let me see what I'm. Tra- oh, that's like what I pay for it, huh? Yeah, cool. uh, yeah. And we're not telling people to go buy Tesla stock or whatever, anything like that. That that is a totally different question. It, it's more the phenomenon of a car company that didn't barely existed a decade ago and is in a market that people said, oh no, it, it, that market's still 20 years away. You're not going to be able to do it and pull it off. And then the and the that's, the valuation is one thing, but they had this. They announced their quarter last week. And they sold like 200 to something thousand vehicles. They have record numbers. They've been growing when all the other auto companies were suffering. One of the things that helped them was, you know, there's a part shortage. But Tesla is a company run by engineers. And they're like, oh, we can't get this part. What do we do? Like, well, can we write software to use a different part? Like, yeah, we can. And they yeah. wrote software so they, the cars could use different parts. And then they're able to meet their manufacturing. Um, it's, it's a story when you get past... The fact that Elon Musk is a very it's a weird dude. person. He's a weird dude. Um, and you look at how much he studies manufacturing. The, they showed the profit margins on the new, what Tesla's now getting, the profit margins they get per vehicle is like insane. And that's one of the reasons they've had this run up on stock. And so if there's anything from it, it's like, you know, you know, conventional wisdom isn't always so wise. Well, I mean, I think it, when, when, especially when it came to this, you know, there's there's uh, certainly a larger trend to follow when it comes to batteries, and and uh, uh, especially when you're looking at green tech, a little advanced uh, a plug, but there is uh, a new podcast series coming out now called How We Survive that is put together by a friend of the show, Molly Wood, uh, which I would encourage everybody to listen to, even though it is indeed a show about green tech coming from a public radio outfit. If, if what you're saying in your head is, well, I know how this goes, uh, trust me, it is, it is great. It is, it is something that, that uh, I was pleasantly surprised with because even though Molly's a friend, I assumed I knew how that was going to play. And it, was, it, it took a, a, a very interesting look specifically at lithium mining with the idea being that like green tech is about batteries. Batteries need lithium, at least now, in terms of the most popular batteries that we use and the most popular battery tech that we use. And so if you are charting the, you know, from iPhones to Teslas to to everything in between, that the most important tech of our age will be batteries, then yeah, Tesla was was a, a you know, it was it was, you know, if run correctly. A, a born to do well and and i think that other electric car companies will do it and they will do it with the benefit of learning from tesla how how uh the story we were hearing about a year ago was that um there's nothing special about tesla uh it um uh, there are other manufacturers with bigger uh, capacities who are doing fully electric you know your uh, uh, rivians your your general motors and all that stuff um how how is it and this is rampant speculation and disclosure. We've already talked about it. Uh, uh, I, I bought some Tesla stock, so I'm, I'm genuinely asking, how is it that they've maintained their market position and lead, uh, given the fact that years ago people figured out, oh, wait, there's something to this the electric vehicle market? 
Well, it's like Apple. I, I, people would say, you know, we're how many years now in on 13 years in, in the iPhone, right? And people are like, well, quick, what's going to happen is they're going to, one, they're, oh, the commodity chips are going to be better because if everybody's buying a Samsung chip, Apple won't be able to keep up in the chip space. Well, Apple said we're only going after one part of the market, the higher end of the market, and most phones that are going to be sold by Samsung aren't going to use the higher end chips. They're going to be selling medium range chips. And so Apple maintained this technological lead. Apple has, Google does wonderful things with software on the Pixel, and like the Pixel 6, I think, is a really neat phone, and I can get in that, like the Tensor chip and stuff. I think they're doing really cool stuff, so it's not like a, ah, oh, them. But Apple, speed, they, what they put, what they invested in their they, their hardware and making it better and better and better, they got farther ahead. And this was the point when the, the number one selling phone in the world is the iPhone. Now, there are other brands that maybe cumulatively sell more phones, but the biggest, the company that gets the most profit is Apple. With Tesla, uh, there's, you can make a prototype, you can get a bunch of electric motors, you can order a chassis from a company, buy some seats, put things in there and make a thing that looks like a car. But to bring that thing to manufacturing is hard. I, and again, not investment advice, I invested in Apple years ago, when I watched the people who were advising were idiots about stuff. They, they would tell you, well, there's a lot of movement here, whatever, and they didn't get the product. And I would see them say things, and I'm like, well, no, that's not true. That's not really what that chip does or the operating system. With Tesla, you'd hear people say, and I got into this discussion with the battery guys, like, oh, well, they're just using the Panasonic battery. And I'm like, that, I'm like that's the size of the casing. It's not the chemistry. Tesla has their own chemistry that they use this for. Like, they have a different battery than other people do. They also have their own software. And these cars are very much, very heavily software-based, but also... Uh, I watched a randomly, I watched this video about this Italian heavy equipment manufacturer that has this like 100 ton press. They show this enormous press that can take like one sheet of aluminum and compress it into a giant, the largest press there is for that. And they're like, well, who's your, who's ordering this? Like, we can't disclose, but we've already sold the first three for next year. Meanwhile, somebody does a teardown on the Model Y and the entire rear section of the chassis one third of the vehicle is one giant piece of compressed aluminum. And they're like, yeah, I wonder who bought this. That's funny. And yeah. And that's like, they like Apple, they will invest tremendous amounts in really in leading technology systems. And so Tesla, the, there was the guy who did the, um, I want to say it was a, a Kelly Monroe or Sandy Monroe. He does the teardowns. He was the guy that criticized the model three when it first came out and talked about the fit and finish and the gaps and stuff. And said, this is a problem. He gets hired by, car manufacturers to go in and basically take a look at how they're manufacturing stuff and tell them, okay, this is what you need to do. Um, and he was critical, Sandy Monroe. Then he did a follow-up video uh, less like, like six months ago or whatever on the Model 3, Model Y, and he was ecstatic. He's like, look what they've done, look at how much it's improved. And that's what you pay attention to. You look at this and you go, oh, okay, like they're investing heavily in new equipment and new ways to do stuff that would work that you know, like this was a case like using that type of press to make a, a chassis was something that experts had been saying engineers you should be doing this for years and years so a lot of stuff like that i think also you know you can maintain your advantage by nothing else looking like a tesla like i mean uh, fr from the outside they look distinctive from the inside they're more distinctive there's there's well you know yeah, I'd say that. I mean, I think other, I think some of the other cars look pretty cool. But I'd say too, it's like when you get when you have autopilot and the software, like the art, the AI in these things is incredible. Yeah, the head, the head of Tesla AI, you know, was a former OpenAI guy. You know, um, Andrew Andre Karpathy is brilliant. They're they're the computing systems. Of these things are incredible. I yeah. mean, that's a thing that I've been to other cars. Other cars have lane assist and have following, and they're good. But they're not like this. And this is also fraught with complications, too. Let me be very clear on that. Like, we pushed through, a, uh, there was a release that got pushed through this weekend for the latest full self-driving. And like, oh, nope, we're pulling this back. But we're dialing it back because it's a bleeding edge. Yeah. Which. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Kings to Tesla for doing it. I think I think it is a, a sign that they are not going anywhere. I I, I, I guess, it, it, are, are we done with the, with, with, with the, 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 the DeLorean stuff? Or, or you know, does, is this you no. know, when, when Hertz is buying it? Like... I, mean, no, I, I think there's still plenty of opportunity for somebody else to swoop in and, and try to eat uh, Tesla's lunch. But that, but that would be a different story than this is a fraud. 
Oh, correct. Right? Like, yeah. Uh, correct. Yes, I, I agree. That, 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 I, I that'd that'd agree be them getting into the game and losing, which is right. different than them conning their way in and then it all imploding right. because you're, they're smoke and mirrors. You're going to see stories because, like, like, I have friends that I have friends that are like that are anti Tesla, and because they're they're informed by like literally like oil industry type people and stuff, and 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 I have I have nothing against oil industry. I need oil. I use oil all the time. By the way, I you know I want us to transition, but I'm not like ah. Oh, why do we need? Uh, I know why we need it. All but anyhow, right. calm um, down, but, Joe Manchin. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> as I carry all barrels of oil around in my Tesla and just throw them at people. <laughs> ah, um, just spraying oil but out of squirt guns. Tesla had this big battery pack in Australia, right? And then there was a lawsuit because uh, the utility that was getting the power was saying that they weren't getting the power they're supposed to get. And, you'd see, and I saw people Twitter, oh, you know, Australian utility still sues Tesla over their battery pack. No, Tesla never got sued. It was a French company that was running the facility that had some issues that wasn't able to meet demand or whatever, and they were getting sued. But people were like, ah, Tesla. They saw Tesla, and people are, uh, there are people who are very, uh, uh, I am, yeah, I, people are very skeptical of, I think, this part of like this. I'm skeptical of a lot of proposals for energy transition and stuff like this, but I think sometimes people get, are so eager to be, aha, we found the flaw. Yeah. And, so. Yeah, I, yeah. I hope we get competition. Uh, uh, so, uh, one thing that 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 we sort of skipped over very quickly early on that Bryce pointed out that I think is very very wise is uh, if for no other reason, uh, it's very important to car rental companies that they have low maintenance issues and mm -hmm. the the nature of of all electric vehicles are that they're going to be <laughs> lower maintenance than than you know. Cars where controlled explosions are timed uh, inside, uh, of. especially high margin vehicles with yes. low maintenance issues. I have my maintenance record for my Tesla that I've had for three years now. Would you like me to show you? Oh, the, please, uh, please. Uh, put added air to tires, and yep, that's it. That's it. <laughs> and we're done. No oil change, nothing. I remember. Now you gotta I bring to your go own air. I mean, can't you? <laughs> but yeah. when I when I went, I remember I had, a, I had a car shop where I'd get my old car fixed, and I remember I was getting it repaired before I went to go get pick up my Tesla. And I talked to the guy that runs the, the car place, like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go get a, I'm getting a Tesla." And he says, "Oh, we we can lubricate the chassis." Yeah. Ah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, oh, That's this it. is like this is goodbye." I, I just. Yeah, I told him this relationship is done. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I'm like, yeah. Ooh. Like you, you just told him, like, hey, I got into college out of state. And he's like, well, I'm sure we'll see each other. <laughs> well, my family's moving too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, that's good oh. for you. Hey, uh, uh, you want to know what else is uh, uh, exciting? Um, uh, and that's subscribing to patreon.com slash weird things. Yeah, dude. We promise that for every... Thirty thousand dollars you pledge, we'll buy a Tesla. Uh, <laughs> we will. Uh, that's 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 the the weird things promise. I'll tell you what, you guys actually had me thinking about just seeing what the uh, uh, trade in on our Rev Four is just for <laughs> just for laughs. <laughs> well, because uh, uh, because of the chip shortage, we were told that that was the last model for the foreseeable future that's going to have a lot of the Those features. Upgrades. Yeah, yeah, a lot of like the the random like cameras for no reason cameras uh, that were kind of like the hallmark of the higher end of that line. They were like, yeah, chip shortage means that no more of those for a while, because once you've set the price again at a, the same high cost, but for less stuff, they're not going to rush into putting the stuff back in. They'll probably just wait until new stuff comes along. Yeah. Yeah. Help us get a RAV5 by yeah. going to patreon.com slash weird things. Patreon.com slash weird things. Give us money, baby. So we've been making some predictions about what's going to be next for space with uh, easier access to space and getting into space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to send you right now. Uh, one of the things we talked about was space stations. Yeah. I'm going to send you a I'm sending Bryce right now. Uh, Bryce, actually go to uh, Orbital Reef. Go to orbitalreef.com. This is a Blue Origin joint, it seems. Uh, yeah, Blue Origin partnering with uh, Sierra Space. And 
they're putting together, also working with Boeing, Redwire Space. And this is thing we talked about before is the idea that like space is more than just rockets starting to build things like space stations. And so this is their plan to actually build a friggin' private space station, industrial park in space, which is a term we've used here. Yeah, that's insane. Now, that, 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 that would be something that would, would, would put Blue Origin on the map. Right, like, because that's something that, that off the map. Oh, you look at you. Uh, 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 that, that's something that that SpaceX hasn't spoken about. That they've been they've been very very focused on on rocketry, right? Yeah, their their primary concern is transportation at this point. Yeah, and you know things like Starlink, things that they think are make sense. So uh, it's it's I am. Space is definitely not a zero sum game in any sense or capacity, but no. it gets treated like that. And this was the thing when we watched kind of the squabbles over the 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 the, the moon lander. That it's like, why more of this, more of this, more of this? You know? Yeah, there's plenty of things that people can be doing. These are brilliant people that work at all these companies. Obviously, we are talking about insane wealth uh, uh, to fund it. Uh, you know, so so why not? Why not? Why not do all the different things that can be done when we talk about being off of Earth, which is, you know, if not infinite, then certainly uh, plentiful. I've I've, I, I've said this before, but but let me just let me just uh, continue to nudge in this direction. Uh, I I can't believe it took me uh, forty five years of life to realize that a space station, all it does is it needs an engine. And then it has a new name. It's called a starship. You know, it's called it's called the Enterprise, and it just goes places. Um, so, so I, 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 yes to all the space stations. Uh, boy, won't it be neat when five, ten, fifteen years from now we're talking about like uh, this old bird has they, they they added these things to it, and now it just flies wherever you want in the solar system. Well, I, maybe there's. There's, there's, it, you, when you design a space station, you design, it's like a barge. You could take a barge, you know, across the Pacific. Right. But you could also but, just drive the tugboat or, or make, yeah. Yeah. Like you right. get into like, you look at like the problem with like the ISS is that from its solar panels and other things, the way it's designed for heating is a sort of thing. Like maybe, I don't, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think, but, but again, I, like- I, I, And ke uh, keep, keep in mind, I, I'll be the first to disclaim that, that th this is a Pollyanna view where we have so many sta stations up there that at some point, somebody, you know, at the lower end of the budgetary spectrum says, well, why don't we take this old thing and just push it over by the moon? Now, now the moon has a space station. Well, that kind but of I thing. mean, if you, but I mean, if you're manufacturing human, like the human support modules, all that stuff, like yeah, like I could see, like you look at the thing and its modules and other stuff like that, like it could be. There does get to be issues of like how much specific thrust it could handle before like things, you know, sh shift apart and stuff. Although the Russians are helping us test that right now, Brian. So. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, 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 stress testers extraordinaire. The Russians. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I could see that you could. Uh, I don't know how much. Again, I don't know. Like, like the, you know, one of the reasons I heard they deorbited Mir Mir was because, like, apparently the way it was designed with the racks, they couldn't pull stuff out, and there was like weird stuff growing in there, Duh. and they realized there was like a contamination risk because this you basically have bacteria and mold. Yeah, that's and, been... and 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 to to be clear, I think what I'm imagining is some kind of science fiction book scenario where let's say there's 70, 80 space stations around, and what we really need to do is figure out whether or not. Um, I don't know, some asteroid's going to smash into Earth or not. So what we do is we attach lens modules to, to five of them, and then we spread them out through, you know, uh, uh, the uh, uh, throughout the Earth orbit so that we essentially create this gigantic super telescope or something. You know, that uh, that's Maybe, that's yeah, the, I... the exciting stuff that goes from totally not – from zero to yeah. possible – well, I think, yeah, I think to me, it, it's kind of also gets exciting when you think about the idea that we'll have shipyards on Earth building stuff that gets launched into space. And the idea that we, these modules, like building these life support modules and stuff. And then the, the, the thing about this station, I guess, is they say it could be infinitely scalable. They could keep adding to it, which if you ever watch the beginning of uh, 
what was the Luc, uh, the uh, Luc Besson movie? Uh, Valerian. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The Thousand City of a Thousand Stars is they show that like the big the city the the big space station thing where they're from started off as an Earth space station. They kept adding modules on, and then aliens <laughs> showed up and added modules, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that's like what's going on here is the idea of like and and I love the idea of an industrial park in space. Like this is a great. This is going to be. I'm I'm super stoked. So what is the timeline? Uh, next week. <laughs> Damn. Yeah! These people are moving. And we're going to uh, drive there in Teslas Bezos. that we rented from Hertz. Bezos yeah! ain't got time for the dilly dally. The, uh, the first. very first sentence on their press release is in the second half of this decade. Second half of this decade. All right, so they're giving themselves Ooh, four years. That is, by the way, that is four, very four, that is four very to good. Nine years. That's a very good way to phrase it. Anywhere between <laughs> six and nine yeah. years away. In the second half of this decade, a commercially developed, owned, and operated space station will start operating as a mixed-use business park, providing straightforward access to all. For all. Second yeah, half. First- of this they've decade. got to sue the International Space Station. That's that's the policy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna sue you out of the sky. <laughs> see, <laughs> the ISS sends them a second place medal. He's like, damn it, not again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, it looks like they're working no. with Blue Origin, Sierra Space, Boeing, Redwire Space, Genesis Engineering Solutions, and Arizona State University. Sun Devils. Uh, they're working with uh, uh, Stanford, UCF, University of Colorado Boulder, U of F, University of Michigan, University of Texas El Paso, University of Texas Medical Branch, Vanderbilt University. Mm. So, Bandy. It's going to be a lot of poets up there. A lot yeah. of poets. <laughs> it's um, like the ultimate liberal arts education awaits <laughs> you among the stars. <laughs> uh, but it's exciting. We're going to see more. The The... The challenge, of course, is if you look at um, this is a contingent, I think, upon New Glenn, which is going to be which is uh, Blue Origins rocket to be able to be up and running and to provide, you know, <laughs> I'm still I'm stealing this from the chat. But it's like I want the meme to be a, a photo of the ISS and it's already just got a banner that says Spirit Halloween. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That has become such a a, a a dangerous, you know, warning sign. Oh yeah, <laughs> they have. We had a huge, huge IKEA downtown Burbank, huge. And I remember when they were closed, and I'm like, I wonder what they're going to do with it. They did park Teslas. They used it for Tesla overflow parking for a yeah. while. And then I look and I see Halloween yeah. store across, <laughs> and I got so excited because in my idiot brain, I'm imagining an IKEA, an IKEA size. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, we gotta go see this, and we walk in, and it's like ten percent of it got just curtained yeah. off, you know. And I'm like, I, we, weirdly, me, you, pay... weirdly, you still got lost in there. It took five hours like, to leave, and you got I'm Swedish like, meatballs. But I'm like, I give me twenty bucks and a flashlight, and let me explore this thing. This yeah. is this is better than you know getting my friggin' you know Halloween just, James yeah, Michael Myers mask. Just another place, yeah, where you can find an XL Pennywise. Yep. <laughs> Excel, how dare you? Um, oh, not to you. One, one might. One might. <laughs> or you might uh, have to buy it because it's the only one that's available yeah. this late in the game. Like I had to do with my David S. Pumpkins outfit that I had to get overnighted <laughs> from Spirit. <laughs> and then explain to everybody the joke. <laughs> uh, so uh, very cool. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, certain news you get, and you're like, man, this is the – when I'm watching uh, – when I'm watching my uh, – uh, when I'm watching the, the stock ticker for Tesla and then to see certain things, like I did not need to know this about this. Let me pull up the actual, uh, uh, Bryce. I want you to go to Jetson, A E R O.com. What is going on up here? So it looks like a drone quadcopter, but you are sitting in a little cockpit. And you are and you are zooming about the desert in your own little personal quadcopter. Look, man, I've been playing a lot of Far Cry Six. This looks too close to <laughs> what it's like to just steal a vehicle and just fly around. 
Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, I guess immediately the 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 thought is uh, how long you get to fly, how fast minutes. you get to fly. Okay, so twenty minutes. That's that's enough to bop from from place to place in like a city theoretically, or if you're in like the rural areas, twenty minutes is. Assuming you can get a straight so, line, you're not dealing with It's traffic. like trying to plan how you're going to use your ATV to go to Walmart, Justin. It's, you don't. And, you just and, you get in there and you fly it around. All right, city slicker. You and, know, there might be some people who are using their ATV to get to the Mart. Quest, question. Um, uh, would, I, would I be right in just assuming that um, along with the drop in the price of technology for all of this stuff would be a, a drop in the price of the AI required to sort of kind of keep you in bounds you know like 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 if you get too close to the ground it doesn't yell at you and say you're about to die but instead just sort of you know bounces you back up kind of yeah. like like a lane change thing yeah that that's that is should you're absolutely right that should be tremendously cheaper but did you notice what they were using for their display uh i did which made me worried because it looked like a very simple uh, one to eight LCD <laughs> display, which didn't no, inspire. No, it's like an Android phone. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Bryce, go back to the page and scroll down. You, you, the, the, the best part about this. Uh, triple redundant flight computer. Start Let's and land further. anywhere you want. Further down, further down. Okay. All right. What else could there be? Text you can specs? order now. Wait, what? for reals? What? Yes. How much? Delivery next year, 2022. 2022 is entirely sold out. Uh, it's $22,000 USD deposit. Uh, production will begin the summer of 22. 22 is all sold out. 23 has three units available for what, 2023 delivery. It's $100,000 or $92,000. What, no. what do you think? We all go in? I mean, I'm in for $5. <sighs> Okay, I, I'm just going to say that if one of us, if we all agree, pinkies up, if we all swear to sell all the Teslas that we own, mm. then we uh, we can invest we in might, Teslas. Yeah. I would not like to do that, but I would do sell, yeah. I would sell all of the Tesla cars that okay, I Okay, wait, hold on. Bryce, you're going to have to sell the hat. Not my hat. <laughs> this is my yeah. McLaren hat. I'm it's sorry. the Monaco livery. It's the most. It's the, <laughs> it's the most expensive thing you own. You need to part with it. I looked at the, I looked at the weight restriction on it, and I'm like, oh, thank God I went on keto. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, but uh, I I sent Bryce. You know. There's competitors out there. Uh oh. And uh, oh no, we can do it for cheap. <laughs> oh yeah, we can do it on the on... With, with a lawnmower. Uh, th this is also straight oh out of God. This is out of Far Cry Three. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! So this is a this is a literal flying bathtub. There's a bathtub with a quadcopter attached to it, and it's these a... these German fools are going nuts. It's a hexcopter. It needs six blades. Oh, it needs six blades. Or, yeah. Holy oh. crap! And they are bringing it up to a to a Seven Eleven somewhere in Deutschland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what i love what i love is so it's a bathtub i mean it, you can't get over that it's a bathtub. oh my god there's 7-eleven's called corpse <laughs> they've like strapped a layer of memory foam to the bottom in lieu of any legs or land it yeah so they're just gonna <laughs> land a heavy ass bathtub can i, can I tell you is what that though corpse cops cops this cops, cops. This, this bathtub one <laughs> bad tubs bad if tubs. the rotors if the rotors break they hit the bathtub that other one if the rotor snap to hit the pilot this may actually be safer it might yeah right because the other one was higher so oh, all i know is i could go pay 92 grand to these guys or i could get like a case of schnapps and a two thousand dollar home depot gift card and go track these kids down yeah but, 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 but like you you could already make a gyrocopter for like twenty thousand dollars right now uh if you're a gyrocopter brave. yeah yeah you ever see the road warrior uh, those little yeah you can't. Gyrocopters are great, but they're not VTOL. Yeah. Are you? They don't. They don't take off. For, you have to. You have to drive them. They have to go forward before they take off. Really? Yep. Huh. That's uh, the, they ain't got no wings. The wing. The propeller's the wing. 
Oh yeah, I guess mm. that's the mechanics. That's why yeah. they work, and those are super dangerous. That one we're looking right there. I was curious because I'm fascinated super by it, but I was looking up at the record of like. Now we're getting into. Of... We we've talked about space stations. We've talked about <laughs> investing in Tesla, and now we're getting into what's super dangerous. Super dangerous <laughs> gyrocopters. <laughs> Oh, but gyrocopters are amazing. So yeah. gyrocopters, they look like a helicopter. They're uh -huh. not. That propeller on top is not powered. It's just as you move forward, it starts to spin. It creates lift. And mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're amazing. They're like, how does that even work? Also, it does. pronounce gyrocopters. <laughs> nope. 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 No. We're no. fine, and they are. No. <laughs> ka chunk ka chunk -ka. Uh, Sorry. That's, uh... Yeah, that's it. Um, want to do picks? Do we just want to all talk about that movie? Yeah. I'll talk about that movie. Do, you want, do we want to enter into a spoiler discussion? This would be the end of the show unless you want to hear discussions about The Dune. Oh. The Dune Abides. The uh, Dune Abides. <laughs> specifically, Dune Part 1, the biggest, I think, yeah, how, whoopsie doodle how, how, in... <laughs> how, how did they... How right, did we right, so cover so this we're, for we're, so we're long? Agreed. We're, okay. Okay. We are we are agreed. This is the spoilering. So uh, uh, our picks are end. Dune. We'll talk about picks Dune. Are Dune. We're gonna talk about Dune. Blah blah blah. Okay. So if you don't want to hear it, click off now. Okay. Real quick, Bryce. Like I'm not crazy. We've they talked about this movie it. a lot. Like like I'm not <laughs> insane that no. I never heard part one. No, it, they. That's it, it. It's you're correct that they never marketed it as part one. This is the worst think, greatest secret since the I, fact that Santa Claus is it, it, alive. It came on. It came on and it now, showed part one, and I was just like, <laughs> "Oh, you sly fox!" <laughs> now, it, uh, it, I'm sure if you had the question of, "Are they going to make a sequel to Dune?" and you looked it up, you would find like, "Yeah, we are intending to make more." of this, this but it was okay. never it was called Dune Part I, 1 can, anyway. This is the world's greatest, greatest con. Claire, let me, let me, let me, the let me like explain something. We need in this discussion, we need to separate the director, Danny Villeneuve, who in interviews talked about it's so big, we had to shoot half of it. We're just doing half the story. He was very forthright on it. The yeah. studios, legendary <laughs> the and poster. Warner Brothers. It's not on the poster. <laughs> no, it's not. It, so, so there is the thing. There, and that's I'm so why I watch happy this movie. that I'm not crazy. That's all I care about because, like, we've covered this for over a year now. It's it's he talked in interviews. I knew this going into it. All this it was going to be first half of the story. He's talked. There's even been headlines about it. But the studio did not want you thinking that, that this which was I half think was, the story. Which was dumb. Right. Because really everybody dumb. I've talked to has said, one movie's not enough for this. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, And I've talked to people, too, like, oh, yeah, like, Dune Part 1 is a good part of the story. Like, yeah, they should do the other novels. I'm like, um, no, they, they have to finish this novel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's, I, think, I think what's crazy is that they didn't have the balls to say, no, this is Lord of the Rings. Everybody knew that when you went to go see The Fellowship of the Ring, this was the beginning of a big epic thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to grant a one-time pardon. Uh, look, you get away with a lot during a pandemic. The world, world's on fire. The I'm world not, is a vampire. I'm not How also going to try to explain that <laughs> Dune Book One is big enough that it deserves two movies. And, and really, all we saw in this movie was act one of, of three acts mm -hmm. and you know what like i'm down for it like justin and i had a twitter conversation yeah. about whether this should be a series or a movie but i like it as a movie i think like even watching foundation which i think is really nice and a very expensive science fiction series like especially now as we're kind of in the middle of that season i'm starting to see some of some of the cost saving stuff we're like dune you just felt like Every every space was new, every space was unique, and that they were really not cutting any corners on showing it. And I really dug it because I know that they have to cut out a lot yep. because it's an adaptation. So at least they're giving me lots of context clues, giving me lots of set pieces. And I just appreciated watching a science fiction epic with an epic Every budget. space was different. Here's the wide spare land that has water. Here's the wide yeah. spare land that has concrete. <laughs> I, uh, Here's I, the I, wide I'm, I'm gonna spare land that, that has because, sand. Because like, uh, I'm going to give them bonus points for keeping things accurate to the book. Uh, like like I, I, the design of the ornithopters I thought was super rad. I just, I just dug 
The Those are the dragonfly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And cool. uh, the um, uh, also, I am a uh, unapologetic lover of the David Lynch uh, uh, original. Um, the the uh, they, they they which meant they had to take away some things. There were some aspects of the 1982 version that was actually written by Frank Herbert. Uh, the weirding modules, the idea that um, uh, uh, the the weirding way was was a a, a physical. A mechanical device that that was written by Frank Herbert that is not here. Instead, the weirding stuff is all just the Bene Gesserits, Bene Gesserits have magic or whatever. Uh, 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 well, no, that was the weirding way. What they added was that you could use the weirding way plus a toy you could eventually buy in stores to do the the weapon. The weirding way in the novels was originally was Bene Gesserit was organic, but then the, the movie thing that they added was that cor was cor correct. Uh, but 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 there were moments I really dug, like uh, you know, like uh, in the original '80s version, you know, my name is a killing word and all that stuff. I don't I don't think any of that uh, gets gets in here. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, dude, I dug it. I dug the hell out of it. I everybody was really really good. I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. I do think that it's the first time that Dune in any way has been cracked open and been accessible. Like, I think that uh, aside from people reading the holy text and having a personal relationship with it, it's been very hard, I think, to uh, 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 broadcast out in a way that you're like, oh, look, witches and that's a, a, a jihad and, and that's a that. And that's like, you know, this was comprehensible. It, it got, uh, uh, you know, the characters were really, really relatable. I tend to think, and this is not about Dune. This is more Denny Villeneuve. Uh, he tends to get very well acted, austere, but sometimes lacking electric charisma performances from his actors, really, really great actors. I think it 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 says something that like the most uh, the people that jump off the screen are like Jason Momoa and Batista, who are like among the the most just like live wire people who play themselves and like everything, and they do a great job of playing versions of themselves even in this kind of film. Uh, uh, but that being said, it's uh, uh, it's remarkable. It, it it is a movie that I do really, really wish was a a theatrical only release so everybody could go kind of see it in in that in that vein they, which i did not they, i watched they, on hbo max they did a couple of of uh for lack of a better word tricks i i don't remember how it was handled in the books i mean in a book you get to just put words in italics and you get to represent thoughts um uh, you have to be a little bit more bold when it comes to uh, motion pictures uh, in the 1980s version, they did this whole bunch of like, you know, hey, just stare blankly and we'll have a voiceover of what you're thinking during all this stuff. Uh, I thought they, they did so many subtle moves, whether it was subtle communications through hand signs, which I don't believe was in the book, or, the or book. Uh, uh, ex exclamations in different languages uh, that, that, that allow you to reveal the actual thoughts of people because these are... Yeah, that you know, wheels within wheels, the, the, the motions that are happening. They're the house that they have the house sign languages in the books. That's like a, like they have that. Okay. Their battle, okay. battle language. Um, yeah, I thought I, I, you know, I, I loved it. And, and I know that like, I, I'm a guy, this is the one book I read almost every year or I read a lot. I love this book. That's my, it's my favorite. If people ask my favorite book, I say Dune. And, and I also know I, I will let go of stuff. Like, Foundation, you'll hear like oh, it's hard for me to like go some things about Foundation. It's like now nah, you kind of, it, I will watch it as its own thing. But like they took so many things and changed so much about it. I'm like, just do a new story. Here they changed some things, and I thought it were really good choices. You know, like Leah Keynes, they made Leah Keynes a woman. I thought that's fine. It doesn't change the story at all to do that. They did a very clever thing, which I appreciate as much as I love world building and backstory. They left out. They're like, we're hey, this is the year ten thousand. Yes, there are these feudal systems. That's there. We're not going to tell you about, oh, yeah, this. we're not going to explain why there are no robots and stuff, that there was this big 10,000 years ago, this revolution against the machines and da-da-da, and that's the big threat. They left that out, which was better, and it was smart because all too often people bog stuff down with lore that's yeah. just thrown at you and not uh, – and, and fans sometimes love it because ah, now I know a thing and I connect a thing, but give us Paul's journey. And it gave us Paul's journey you know, to a point. 
And I liked that. I really, really liked that. We didn't get the, the I wanted, I would have loved a little more palace intrigue to set up parts two and whatever they're going to do. Cause you have, cause like I was talking to my girlfriend who knows nothing about the story. And I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, like, you know, he's, he's, he's not going to marry Chani. He's going to marry the emperor's daughter so that he could become the emperor. But that's going to cause it. You know, like, there's this other stuff in there. That I think for people who didn't know, would be like, oh, like, yeah, I'm like, this is game. This really is game of Thrones in space. They, yeah. You, you got a taste of that in the fact that I think it's like 80% into the movie. You finally hear what we assume is, uh, 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 Duke Leto's wife referred to as his concubine and, yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. like and then and then even then it's just like uh well no they yeah just passively right. call her that and uh, it's uh, just like no oh okay yeah all right yeah. Uh, uh uh heads up like i have not read the book in full so this was my first uh, uh understanding of of that uh, other than watching the, the lynch movie forever ago and uh uh when he's like like oh like your concubine i'm like oh really and then the next scene he's like in bed with her and he's like i should have married you anyway i'm gonna die <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you want to make very clear that you're not my wife uh if that was a note that we got at some point during screening not my wife gonna die now i'll see you later but 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 also like that was an important moment because it reminded you that she is serving two two masters i yes. mean she's there she wants to raise a good kid she wants to be a good supporting partner to duke Lido. but uh at the end of the day she's part of the thousand year plan of the bene Gesserit. And, yeah and that's that's ultimately where her loyalty lies and i i appreciated the fact that they uh there's and again, somebody point they would have liked more lore, and I get it. I get it. I think that I understand that you know the 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 want for more lore, but the advantage of not having it is that you could focus this, and then the world gets to get bigger. And like if they, and I presume at this point, I you know box office wise, I went and saw it in the theater, even though I have HBO Max, I wanted to see it in the theater. Box office has done really good. It's done for pandemic numbers. It's done exceptionally well. It had a really good hold over Saturday. We'll see what it does next weekend. It would be stupid for. Warner like Warner Brothers, you know, remember they did Batman Begins and then let's see and then Batman Begins became very popular in home video and stuff and then they did Dark Knight and Dark Knight was just one of the, Crushed. the top grossing yeah. film of the time. I think here it's a good movie. The Rotten Tomatoes from the audience it's 92%. There's no doubt about it. So far people like it and probably a lot of them doing vans, but I think we'll see where that goes, but those are great numbers and even if it doesn't perform box office where they should, Part of that's the uncertainty is that you walk out of there and if you never don't know what's going on, you like you tell your friends like into the fellowship of the ring. We got that teaser for what was going to be in two towers. Yeah, we didn't get that here. We just got. Oh, yeah, it's this part one. Did you like it? I mean, we don't know. What do you think? Partly because like a uh, uh, spoiler alert, if you've never read anything, uh, boy, oh, boy, just like like we just saw the end of act one and boy, oh, boy, does act one barely resemble everything in acts two and three i mean it's 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 a very different experience i mean wh uh, what i like about this act is that it it basically tells an entire i mean it's basically you know they get installed they get kicked out they fight their way back and, to the and, palace and, and the, that's really all you kind of can fit in two and a half hours of this thing. the the political is, it is my favorite part of of it's always been my, and in fact, that's why um, uh, the uh, uh, Brian Herbert uh, and uh, Kevin J. Anderson stuff focuses. It's it's all prequel stuff with House of Trades, Horace Harkonnen, and House uh, Corno, and all that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that's all fun stuff, you know, feudal, uh, 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 feudal Italy, basically, and is what they're playing in. Th this this ep at least from from what I can assume, this this movie gives us uh, like. A, the it gives us all the players for that we get like a trial we evaluate everybody we just like it gets us in the door because i think i think if we had more lore and we had more and more like why there's no robots and why it needs to be the spice and all of this other stuff i think it would have been way too much and and they keep it very simple why did they put us here if they were going to kick us out that's the only story that's the only question you need to have and and it addresses it pretty more or less and it sets up to everything else i like i think it's the right appetizer for i think everybody's decisions make sense mm -hmm. you care about everybody there's yeah. an element where nobody's on the screen where you're like what are their motivations and i think in, in a story this big that's where things can get lost is they just show up it's a famous actor they're they're chewing the scenery and they're talking about some random stuff and and it's like okay i have no connection and in a movie like this 
you you always knew like at the very least who they were and what they were doing they uh, uh they showed extraordinary uh restraint by hollywood standards for things they could have done that would have been fan servicey and cool like we never heard uh of uh, the Mentots explained, and you know, we never heard the litany of the juice of Safu, and only barely do we hear of, uh, uh, I will not fear, fear is the mind killer. We, we, we barely hear that. And the, the big moment when my kids were freaking out, they were like, oh my God, is that person going to ride a, a, a sandworm? Yeah. And it's like, nope, they're going to die, but you, I'm glad but you thought of that. That's definitely what they were yeah. setting up to do. <laughs> right. Then, uh, wouldn't that be cool if somebody did? I mean, because <laughs> then Zendaya looks back and says, you haven't even seen Cowabunga. <laughs> right. The yeah. end. Remember, we, we did <laughs> see at the end, they Could, did show us somebody riding Exactly. Yeah. Right, right, no, right, yeah. right, right. But 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 just like, oh my God, they they, they held back so hard and that's so hard to do. Uh, I mean, qu- question, the, um, uh, the most haunting part of, uh, and again, I read both the book and watched the movie, but, but I remember it from the movie. The most haunting part of the movie in the 80s was uh, the installation of the heart plugs. Uh, that, that's canon. That's in the book, right? That was Lynch. Oh, damn. That was the best thing. That was the best thing. Oh, I, I, I still get the shivers thinking about it. Oh. Um, spe- yeah, that- speaking on restraint, right. though, like I think, it's very, I think it's very bold to take who is someone who's probably the second listed actress uh, the t- take zendaya and give her nothing in give this her movie about, about seven minutes <laughs> give her uh, I nothing mean, I mean, jesus <laughs> jesus christ they certainly showed her enough throughout the movie <laughs> my god i mean i mean look I, but I, it's smart i also <laughs> think it's kind of interesting if the idea is to no, kind no, of no, no, but, but, but to be honest and this is where i think andrew's dead on is that when there's no plan right now for a second movie there is like well, there's sure. a plan, but there's always a plan. And then getting everybody together and getting the money together and shooting it is a whole different thing. This isn't like what New Line did with Lord of the Rings, where they were like, okay, we are trying to shoot all these things as back to back to back as we possibly can. Uh, trying to keep the cast cohesive, trying to keep their schedules cohesive and, and moving ahead. Uh, when you get to the end of this, and you're like, wow, this was something where like Ashley, who's not plugged into a lot of pop culture and certainly is not plugged into Dune. She's watching and she's like, oh, Batista. Oh, Aquaman. Yeah. Oh, Thanos. <laughs> oh, Zendaya. Like, like she was fucking thrilled with this cast. She loved it. She knew she knew a bunch of people. And that's not something that, that's common for her. You get to the end and then it's like, oh, this is when Zendaya really starts to sing. Uh, uh, oops. I guess at some point in the next three years, <laughs> uh, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna see. If we're excited about it. Like that is a bummer. Like that is that mm-hmm. is a legit bummer to to get to the end of this and and not have any expectation. One one, one last note uh, uh, to to tip the hat of restraint, Hollywood restraint that they showed. I think we get one one scene where they full on show us just how big the sandworms are. That's it. And uh, everything else is just implied by by. Well, it does swallow like a tanker. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. that's the one. <laughs> well, no, the other one is when it comes up and he's like in front of it. And you get to see like the whole big face of it. Okay, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but 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 still, uh, by Hollywood standards, uh, real realist. No. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, yeah it was well done. Danny Miller is he's amazing, and I think that. I think yeah, I'm 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 over the moon for what they did. My my biggest gripes are with the studio. I'm over uh, the dune. I'm over the dunes. Yeah, I think I'm over the Maldib. Um, <laughs> oh, which by the way, they uh, talk about restraint. Uh, I don't believe they 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 alluded to the desert mouse. We saw it, but they never used the words uh, Muad'Dib. Uh, I they don't know what that is, and I don't know why they would have done that. Exactly, which but, is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. Okay. That well, because. Sh- that the significance of that name won't happen until the next one. Sure. He because so, uh, yeah. P, so part two will be mostly a new cast because a lot of them are perished in this film. Read the books. <laughs> no, hey, no, I won't actually. <laughs> you can't make me <laughs> screw that. I'm not uh, doing that. I will watch yeah, the movie. Uh, and tell me what it is. It's a science fiction film. Um, and also with trippy 
psychedelics and visions and talking to ancestors and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I was going to say because also the, if, if the whole thing is the 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 nexus point between all space and time, then I'm I'm going to assume that everybody in this star-studded cast, even those that are that are uh, seemingly dead, at some point are going to interact with the living uh, in our story. Okay, so I yeah, have, I, I, I've got a question for the people who have read the book. I really liked this movie. I thought it was great. I thought it was a nine and a half out of 10. I couldn't help but notice that it was um, a literal white savior story. Timothy Chalamet goes to Iraq and uh, becomes the king of Iraq. And that seemed very strange to me. Well, uh, number one, yes. Number two is the Fremen don't have a particular racial identity. They're an, they're, they are a, and so the idea yeah. is that can you never have that story? Can you never have? And also, um, maybe he's, maybe he, he's not. I mean, I mean every... sure. Uh, I'm sure there's more. I know that it's a big story. I know that this is scratching the surface, but, I, but si I'm just saying like the optics of what I watched were. I, I, I understand. And yeah. I would say the, the part of the reason is like, would you consider Darth Vader a white savior? <laughs> uh, I I don't. You know what? I don't know enough of those movies to say either way. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll put it this way: You see the visions. The thing he's afraid of, like the thing is that, mm -hmm. like you saw the visions of them bringing war to other planets and stuff. Um, uh, there was that they saw them like I Paladin, saw the, and, you know. it, 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 that that that's another massive restraint okay. moment where they only yeah. barely referenced it. Uh, the bulk of the book is 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 uh, uh, I don't think this is ruining anything, yeah. uh, but but the bulk of the book is uh, Paul sees all the possibilities for the future, and the one he doesn't want is jihad under the Atreides banner. And he keeps thinking, how can I not let that happen? That's, that's the primary conflict as, as he uh, 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 connects with the Fremen. So, so okay. the fact that they only barely touched on it in the beginning of this, again, uh, by Hollywood standards, incredible restraint. I, I, I thought it was good. Yeah, I'd say it's a Bryce. It is a very, very complex story where the concept of morality, sometimes who was right, who was wrong, isn't known for thousands of years. Because in the story continues on with children and the, 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 the major protagonist in the story of the, the rest of the books, the seven are, gosh, because then they did the two sequels that Kevin Anderson and Brian Herbert wrote after Chapter House. Mm. Um, but those but were like, prequels, right? No, they, they, oh, they, they also wrote did a ton. Sequels. Okay, got Yeah, it. they yeah. did Hunters of Dune, Sandwars of Dune and all got that, which, which were based on Herbert's notes. But anyhow... It is a really complex story. It's not Avatar. It's really a complex story. Okay. It was. It. It, oh. it was just. A, it was. You know. I. I trust. I understand very clearly. This is. This is part one. I mean, they put it on the tin, but it was also inside the tin. <laughs> inside. That. That's right. Not really on the outside. But it, it. It was just a thing that by the end of the movie, I was like, "This is really cool," and also it definitely looks a very specific way, and it's a big story, and you can kind of. We, you could talk a lot of ways to, to explain it. But. Just say it. The bagpipes threw you off. The bagpipes. Threw, <laughs> if they didn't come in with bagpipes. If Dug them. Zimmer if were, bringing in something crazy weird. Those, those if, it, if, it, uh, if, if, if it were a drum machine instead of bagpipes, you would have been like, I don't know, maybe. I would have been into it. I would, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, it, it is the reason I love the novel is it's really, really in the series is it gets into just a lot of complexity what, of stuff. What, when, oh. One last thought on it is um it, it's a hard trick to pull off to make something feel so big when showing such a small piece of it and and that's something i thought this movie did very very well like you felt like this was an intergalactic plot come to fruition even though we only got to see this this thin slice through five or six sets I, of I, eyes. Yeah, I, I think that, that that might be colored by the fact that you do know it's a bigger story. So, like... I, I mean, do we, we know that the, the Emperor conspired with House Harkonnen yes. to betray... I mean, that's those those are fairly big things. The, the Emperor of the known universe... No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. No, I'm agreeing that... Okay, that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying that the fact that, that, that you think that it's a peephole view is a... a because you know that there is a correct. gigantic world uh, behind it. I think it felt like a massive story. Co co correct. So uh, their plans for this, like Legendary Pictures and HBO, um, 
one is uh one obviously the wait and see approach which drives me nuts i i don't think there's if they don't do a dune 2 i think we boycott legendary and warner brothers yes. i just say Can't, no more cancel hbo max until yeah yeah we get a release date and whatever uh but you know they have the plans for the dune the sisterhood the hbo max series yeah yeah that'll so be that- interesting um i i uh, uh, uh disclosure i only uh, I, I've only experienced the first book and I, I started one of those prequel books and I liked it. Okay. Uh, but, but, uh, so, so, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not inherently primed to, to want to go into deep lore S- similar to like, you know, the new game of Thrones series that's coming out. Uh, Although that I'll be- tell you what, I think, you know, uh, uh, the peacemaker looks great. I really liked the uh, Suicide Squad and the new and the new uh, uh, Peacemaker spinoff looks uh, super fun. Uh, uh, yes, I 100% agree. Also, I 100% pretty much am certain that I know everything I need to know about the Peacemaker to enjoy everything about that. Yes. Uh, this other stuff sounds uh, uh, heavy on the lore that I'm worried about. Well, well I, I, yeah, I, I, I would. Web Justin, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I I think that the, the Bene Gesserit for me, I'm like, yeah, I want to know more about that. But these this weird the weird coven that uh, uh, they're like they, warrior they, nuns yeah. trained in martial arts and intrigue and stuff. So like there's there's a lot there to, to interact because they're very they've been the shadows. I think they're very I think it's a very interesting thing for an HBO series. And like the idea of Sony said, do they want a franchise? Yeah, that's the goal. The goal is there is if you talk about a science fiction uh, franchise with tons of directions and stories. You know, it's second only to maybe, you know, Star Trek and Star Wars. When you look at the sheer number of stories, if you look to see who was got consulting credit, it was my friend Kevin J. Anderson, um, you know, and so they're bringing in Kevin and Brian in to go work on this. What the goal is, they want to make this into a big universe. They want to have a big science fiction universe. So. Hmm. So we're saying we hated it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I loved it. I, a lot of visions, maybe more visions than I wanted. But other than that, I thought Villainy was fantastic. Uh, I a uh, number of visions seemed about right, or or at least sorry, it was a lot. The, of num- the number of visions seemed consistent with every other iteration of Dune that I have experienced. <laughs> yeah. And I and I want to give too, like go back and watch the Lynch one. Lynch, what Lynch pulled off was a miracle. Was yeah. a miracle. I uh, it's funny how you know there are certain lines from the book that made it into the Lynch movie. And I, I watched the Lynch movie a whole m- bunch of times. So as a result, like I found myself mouthing along when they're in the middle of battle and, and then, you know, the knife goes in and I, and I say myself along with the show, I'm like the slow blade penetrates the shield and all that stuff. It's, it was, it was, it was fun <laughs> as somebody who loved the campy um, uh, previous incarnation. Uh, it was a triumph as somebody who respects the book, um, I do think, and uh, I do think the smartest thing I did was prep both of my daughters by saying, before we begin, the spice is oil. This is the Middle East. Let's go. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I, I think that mattered mm-hmm. a lot for them to be all like, oh, okay. Actually, and LSD. I- yeah. And LSD. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's oil if oil got you uh, wicked, uh, high. wicked high yeah. and you saw visions. Uh, uh, it was funny during it. Ashley's just like, oh, I get in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Iraq, Iraq, is, like, <laughs> Iraq. Okay, I get it. You know, you just have to, you have to judge it by what they put on the screen. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I really dug it. I went and saw it at a theater. I, uh, I, paid ten dollars to watch it on i i feel like it was not a great theater it was not an alamo or it was not an imax or an xd or anything and i feel like i would have liked to have paid a little more for the bigger screen because i i definitely was in the theater feeling like this is not even 1080 this doesn't even look high def like it looks big the sound is fine but it doesn't even like look that sharp and I don't have a big 4K TV, but I have a lap. I could have sat at home and watched it on my laptop, way closer to my face. I, I I've heard the the buzz from people that I that I trust is like, this is an IMAX. Go see it in in the biggest format you can. That that it makes use yeah. of uh of, of of every inch of that screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the scale of it. Like that, I was really conflicted of whether I would just watch it at home or go into a theater. But there's. It's 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 convenient enough that I could go do it, and it was 
in the middle of the day Friday, so there was nobody else there. Um, but would have liked maybe a nicer screen. Well, you want to dump on that theater re real quick? Can we? Like, no, like, dude, it's bomb every the theater. Uh, uh, yeah. we, we've talked about this on Cord Killers. Every, uh, almost every movie theater you go to is at best projecting in 2K. Uh, the, the, yeah, like, that is kind of a known thing now. Yeah, it's and, and frustrating. It, it's garbage. Yeah, like you, uh, you have a better uh, television at home than movie theaters. Have. It's so weird. Yeah, and it's so, so that that was a, that was a weird kind of frustrating thing. Uh, so. I don't know. Take, take that yeah. into account when you're making your viewing decision. You just look at a grainy picture of Zendaya for two seconds for the 70th time. <laughs> I have blue eyes. Oh, but you have blue eyes now. Yeah. Oh, isn't that interesting? What does mm, that mean? What I don't know. Mm. What's Zendaya up to? She's standing in the sand. Yo, what's up with the way you've outfit your... Uh, you're, you're locked down for battle formation. I don't know. It just seemed like the way to wear it. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Dude. Dude. It's been the weirding way. Ah! All right. There we go. Tony, tell us on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't even talk about the voice stuff. The voice stuff was really cool, too. It was. Okay. Um, all righty. I really like Befuddled Batista. Befuddled Batista is a good Batista. All right, we're going to do... Uh... Why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Batista. I'm so confused. <laughs> Uh, we'll do a little bit of after things here. If you need a break, now it's time to do it. Yeah, I'll take a quick one. Beep up, boop. I got to go do a thing. Okay, so. uh, that's fine. Right. I got something we can yeah. talk about, I think. All right, bye. Have fun. Bye. Andrew. I finished Squid Game. Oh, really? Uh, I rewatched the first episode because we will be watching it for spoilering time. Mm. So I am uh, only... Only one episode in still. <laughs> uh, can I say that I called the twist at the end, halfway uh, through? Mm, Wait, you said you rewatched it. No, I said I rewatched the first episode. Oh, you so you haven't? I've watched, watched one episode of the program twice. Oh shit! I thought you meant that you had seen it and now you were rewatching it. Oh, okay, never mind. I I expect that there will be a Spoiler twist. Spoiler so alert! Is... There's a twist in the show, yeah. and ya boy called it. Hmm, interesting. I, I went right in my wife's face. I said, I think this shit's going to happen. Then it happened. And I was like, I told you. Hmm. There's definitely having, having watched like other deadly game, uh, you know, movies and shows. I have many ideas of, of all of the things that they don't touch on in that first episode. That will be a spoilery or the long game on it. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the show succeeds not because it's, hanging on any twist you know the, the show succeeds because it makes a promise that there's going to be a brutal contest and spoiler alert the contest is really fucked up and brutal and uh Watch uh, language it, please oops sorry <laughs> uh uh it, it also uh you know it, it's it's really well shot it's really well paced the iconography is amazing um it um uh nope i lost it oh no Wow, dramatic music. <laughs> um, no, sorry, I cut you off. Um, it's well put together. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 the acting is something that I had to talk to Tom because Tom watches the most amount of Korean programming Thomas. that I know. Yeah. Uh, and it was just about the acting style, like that that both Parasite and. Uh, Squid Game being breakout international hits, uh, there tended to be an element of Korean acting that can be very bombastic, that like very seamlessly kind of transitions, uh, very serious with very animated yelling and at times comedic elements to the point where it's almost default both of those, uh, uh, if you were to just do those in English, they would probably be thought of as bordering on uh bordering on like dark comedy uh okay uh, because there are a lot of ways that like the tension is kind of broken with that in a more regular sense than let's say like a scorsese movie or something like that which utilizes comedy to do stuff mm -hmm. um and tom was like yeah no yeah if you've okay yeah, yes we'll talk about it good 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 
I'm glad to hear you saw that. Uh, I actually watched half of it too, but, but I'm curious. I, I don't know. I don't know who this man is, but I, I watched half of it. It was interesting. Cool. We'll, anyway, we'll, Squid, we'll game. Squid Game. Squid Game. There are squids, and they play a game that's under the sea. This oh. is a show about squids. I almost felt bad that uh, that we made it a spoiler in time thing because I was like, "Well, dang it! Now I don't get to keep watching." Oh, <laughs> I have to go one at a time. Um, it, I think uh, we were talking a little bit about. Uh, just the first episode and it reminds me a little bit of the phenomena that happened with uh, this video game gone home um if it's it's an indie darling turned very big success but it was one of the things where like as they promoted it the idea is like you're going into this empty home and it's dark and it's your old family house and you're trying to you know find out what happened in here and it's got this very kind of spooky vibe and then pretty quickly you realize, oh, this is actually a really heartwarming kind of reflection on the on your character's like childhood and growing up. Um, and but they still have to sell it as like, oh, isn't this actually scary for like a second? Because yeah. that was the intention. And I think there is a certain amount of that in Squid Game where I think they want you to think, oh, this is extravagant, but but kooky until in the first episode when they do the game and the game is it's very brutal brutal sorry uh uh, uh, uh the squid I game see, gets you gets you, yeah gets you i know i know uh, <laughs> i see you uh, says that uh, the vips are uh cringe worthy uh, i will say that it sounds exactly like what i would imagine uh, a, a football luxury box sounds like mm. interesting so i did not ha i did not quite have the same reaction oh is this Something that is coming up in Squid Game. He has seen all of Squid Games. So I see. Seen yeah, no, all the me. squids. I've seen their games. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's do after things, and let's. We don't need to make this any specific length. I don't. I no. I know I've got thoughts anywhere, on this. Anywhere, anywhere uh, between but, thirty seconds and, and thirty, 30 hours. Hours. minutes. Ooh. All right. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined as always with Justin Robert Young. I have a poor head, short, a $100 McLaren hat. <laughs> and Brian Brushwood. I can now afford a McLaren hat because I've been watching Tesla's stock price all day. <laughs> That's right. Hello, welcome to the After Things Podcast where we talk about how expensive my hat was. It was $100. And <laughs> And talk man, about my man spent a hundred dollars <laughs> on a hat. It's the special Monaco livery. And it's it the just, white and papaya. That's that's. And it just says a thing on it. <laughs> it doesn't even light up or like it, like it ain't like 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 L.A. Knights light ups. Like it I, just I, 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 it doesn't I, have it doesn't have the hands. Doesn't have that Skechers clap. technology in it. You no. can't put like sodas on it and drink it through a straw. Like Excuse it's just me, a I need to log into hat. scamstuff.com and just hit. How do I hit one button and double all the prices? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just name everything F1 edition. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fun one. Um, this is the show about being creative professionals, people online, and. And um, I, I saw this pop up in my subscription feed on YouTube last night. And when I when Brian was walking in the, in the door, he recognized this. And Justin, you even said that you watched part of this. Uh, but you, you tweeted it and I watched it. Uh, uh, so uh, just to give, I guess, people some background on this, maybe. Uh, yeah, because this is my question. I don't know who this man is. So uh, uh, we're going to talk about this video from William Osman. He is a YouTube video creator. He makes, uh, he's he's like a maker. He, he builds devices and machines and um toys and he documents it um and he posted this pretty late last night i want to say it was like 10 or 11 p.m when he posted it the title is just i'm done and it's about 20 22 minutes or so uh, and the first half is basically him kind of talking about his experience um on as a youtube creator as someone who kind of puts puts their life their their personal life and the personal work that they do on video and um the 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 challenge the 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 and I, I know I've had this the the very difficult challenge of receiving negative comments or 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 not exactly constructive comments on videos um, and and the overwhelming scale the overwhelming pressure that comes from that the other half of the video is um, clips from other popular creators video makers streamers who talk about about their similar experiences of of, I think he, he makes a very good quote, and, and I'll, I'll open the door after this, but um, uh, of saying, like, it, on YouTube, you become popular when you're authentic, when you're very human. 
but then once you're successful, it is not possible to be human or authentic anymore. It is very difficult to continue being. Or, or you are not perceived as being authentic or human at that point because you're successful. <laughs> yes, yes. I, and, I, I, and I think that is, a, this, it's a very long video. I'll have the link in the show notes. I recommend you take a listen to it as well. But um, I know when I watched this, I remembered, especially when I first would do like Twitch streams, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners have this where you're streaming and maybe nobody's watching or there's one or two people watching and then you get a random like spammer who comes in and says, oh, your face is bad and you kick them out, but it's still there. You still saw it. You still had to experience that. Um, and and I think when you scale that up to success and being seen by hundreds of thousands of people, millions of views, what have you, um, it's still one person doing that. It, there's still a very human element to the brand culture we've built around social media. Um, Brian, can, maybe I'll toss to you first. What, what, what were your thoughts about this? Uh, yeah, the second half of this video, um, he tosses it out to uh, a lot of uh, YouTube all-stars, just sort of asking the general question, like, why is it that uh, with a thousand comments and 999 of them being hooray for you, you're great. We, we can't help but latch on to that one uh, that says something negative. And, and um, everybody acknowledges that it sucks and it's clearly something broken in our wetware. Uh, but in this case, the first half of the video is, is truly heartbreaking because it's very clear that, that, that William is hurting. And I take him at face value when he says he's done. Um, and to walk away from YouTube success is, uh, that's a difficult thing. Um, and uh, I, I have multiple thoughts, but before I, I go into the deep dive, um, uh, uh, I just want to say that uh, uh, one of the things that is beautiful about YouTube is that anyone can play. One of the things that's dangerous about YouTube is that anyone can play. And... I feel very uh, privileged in that uh, I took my lumps on the streets, literally street performing. I took my lumps on stage, having fruit thrown at my stage and doing bad gigs. And, and, and you, uh, I, I, I have a thick skin because of it. And I felt that when I started the, the YouTube world, uh, you know, at the age of 33, I think, um, <clears throat> I, I kind of knew what I was getting into and I was, I was girded for battle. Um, I can't imagine what it's like to go through the same thing that, that, that just whatever my experience has been and, and not be somebody who got knocked around enough that, that, that you built up a, a thick skin beforehand. And um, my heart goes out to everybody who is sharing a part of themselves on this platform and, being rewarded uh, uh, to the profit of Google, being rewarded with pain. And mm -hmm. that, that really breaks my heart. Uh, let me start off by saying this. That man, William, I don't know his last name. Osman. Awesome. Uh, that's fine. But it's even better that I don't know his last <laughs> name when I say that he doesn't owe anyone anything, up to and including the fact that if he says he's done and he leaves, he should. Mm -hmm. If he says he's done and he comes out with a new video tomorrow... He, he should. should. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. let me start with that because I think the the one thing that 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 immediately I reacted to was in the reaction to that video being like, I hope he has a great career delivering mail or whatever else he's going to do. Now that we're done, support for him means I'm 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 cool with him moving on from this toxic platform. And indeed, if that's what he wants to do, that's fine. I I I, I think this being the only video that I've ever seen of the man. He's clear, clearly a charismatic person. He's clearly in pain because of the situation that happens when uh, uh, you get online feedback. So let's talk about that. Online feedback. Uh, it's brutal. It's brutal. And it's relentless if you want to make this your living. Uh, it is something that uh, uh, is, like Bryce pointed out, uh, very, very hard in the small dosage, in the I'm streaming for a few people and somebody says, oh, you're blank, blank, blank. Uh, uh, it's Your hat's not expensive enough. Exactly. <laughs> and they, a common problem. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's awful in the high dosage. That's the only comment I want on every screen. <laughs> it just says cheap hat. How expensive hat. was that hat? Cheap hat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, cheap hat. 
<laughs> I knew I should have got the black and gold one. I knew I should have got the black you're gonna, and gold You're going to find out what cheap <laughs> uh, uh, how that's spelled in Portuguese. Uh so yeah, it, it, it's hard in in the in, in in the large term. It's hard when memes come up and and uh, uh, you lose the narrative of your of your of your audience. I've I've had a thing where, you know, when when you live in public, and Brian and I specifically have have with a uh, great night and night attack and BB live show and NSFW show before it, have made a part of our brand sharing embarrassing things about our lives. We have made that a a a content fountain, uh, for which it's hard when you when you move forward and people who think that they are part of the party because you have shared this thing wield it in a way that when you receive it is you feel inappropriate, right? Like you feel like it is it is an insult in that moment, right? Because we don't control how we feel about all this stuff coming in and and uh, there's no guarantee that where we are in our lives is going to be when we're emotionally ready to hear any of it uh the one thing that i i i i think is is almost too tightly focused on is the idea of why is it 99 uh, compliments and one insult that i focus on as opposed to just hey this is a really weird lifestyle and we are pioneers. There are going to be people that grow up behind us that have seen people do it and, and, and understand and maybe are able to com compartmentalize their lives in ways that, that we do not comprehend because we come from a land before and are building a land here. But there's no doubt about the fact that this stuff is scarring. And, and the only thing that I would say to any content creator out there is you have to protect the franchise. The franchise is your brain. The franchise is your work ethic. The franchise is your happiness because that's ultimately what you want out of it. So if you can protect that, build walls wherever you need to to make sure that, hey, is ingesting this, getting in the way of, 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 of creating, of, of fulfilling myself, uh, uh, you know, if you can do it and it's not, easy it might not even be possible <laughs> but it is the only goal that i ever think of when i'm getting to a point where i'm feeling burnt out is that the line for me is am i damaging the franchise am i damaging my ability to want to do this to want to live the life that i've sacrificed so much for and if that's the case then i gotta take a step back i gotta figure a way to stop running as hot i gotta i gotta do something because that that's what this is and i i i hope because that man is talented, that uh, 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 this is not the end of him creating, whether or not he's in front of a camera, whether or not he does any any million different things. That's up to him. No, he doesn't know it, nobody anything. I hope he, he continues to sell forward. Well, and 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 I, yes, and 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 I think that he will continue to do wonderful things. But I'm so curious because all three of us are at you know. Uh, different points in our, in our journey uh, as mm -hmm. creators. Um, how, how did that land with with you, Bryce? Um, it, it it really, um, I I I really feel for him because I am in. I feel like I'm I'm one like bad PR release from deleting any of my social media accounts at any given day. Like I I I like what I go to Twitter for, which is to, to see friends and, and make jokes and stuff. Um, but on the other hand, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, there, there's a, there was a sentiment that I saw um, on Twitter um, maybe a year or so ago. And that was um, the worst thing you can do on Twitter is be very good at Twitter. Twitter is the kind of place where the better you are at it, the more you, the less you can use it, the less functional yeah. it becomes. And um, as a place where I'm trying to just use it to keep in touch with people, maybe follow brands or companies or whatever, or other maybe creators. Maybe puns it's, about bodily fluids. Maybe whatever yeah. you're doing all day. <laughs> maybe. You never know. It, 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 um, it, it feels like putting good energy after bad to a certain degree. And it's, and, you know, I... I, I was I was 
I was tweeting with somebody else about this earlier today, and and um, it, it it just makes me feel like the tools that we have, the tools that we give to people to interact between creators and and uh, viewers, are are very very powerful. And I don't want to begrudge anyone who is well meaning, but is otherwise causing a maybe a net negative by their interactions um, to say that well you're you're trying to be good but you're still being bad because but there's there's not enough villains in the world to say that it's all just trolls like the youtube comment section is only bad because it's spammers well, n no there are th there are not enough villains in the world for that to be the case right and either the, either we need to say hey normal well-intentioned people you're doing bad which i don't think people want to do in general um or we should look at the tools and the ways we allow people to interact with ourselves. Um, because, you know, I tweeted about this last night and I woke up this morning. The very first thing I did when I checked my phone was see someone had like given me a, well, yes, but, and I, and you know, I had about two hours this morning before I needed to come out here for weird things. And about one hour of that was spent becoming the steward of this man's argument in his video. Yeah. And, and a, I didn't love that the person I was talking to. And I think we ended up in a very good place. So I, I, and I don't begrudge that conversation, but it was definitely not, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody in the chain from Twitter to William to me or the person I was talking to thought that that was a good use of the platform or communication at all. It's, it's funny you mentioned that because, um, uh, I saw this, uh, 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 in the middle of the night, I happened to be up for a couple hours. And so I watched this and at, around that same time, I was like, let me knock out some emails. Mm -hmm. And there was a very detailed email from somebody who, who had originally sent a one line, like, uh, 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 you guys are so sad. Now I used to be a fan, but now you're garbage. Mm -hmm. And I just responded with, can you elaborate? And to my surprise, they did. They, they did. And, and, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and you I, think you're helping by trying to untangle it, but when you get into these moments where you can't untangle somebody else and you don't want to pressure them to think differently, or at least this is my thinking on right. this, I, I, I would like you to see the the merits of either what I'm saying or the, the stance I've got, but I'm not in a, it's not, I don't get paid enough to change people's minds. I, well, not I, a, I can't I, I, fix you or change the way you've, I, I, I think, I think that what we're kind of dancing around is the fact that there is a, an imbalance of where people, and this is something that that that, uh, that guy William takes. You know, he he makes a, a point to say that like people assume that if you are doing what you want to do on YouTube, that you are living the dream. Mm -hmm. Well, and 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 more than that, kind of beyond uh, 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 being able to be hurt. You know, this is a celebrity element. This is not new to YouTube. What is new is that with social media and with the fact that a lot of these cultures, these online cultures have been built, you know, effectively from the message board system, which was only about communication, only about finding people with similar interests, that these are built on exchanges, online exchanges, text-based exchanges primarily. And in that case, you're just dealing with a lot of people who don't know how to interact because human interaction is complicated and interaction between somebody who you think is famous and, and you who you think are below them and you might be thinking you're helpful or jealous or all of the above, like a million different things. Or you're just trying to type something and it, and it gets read wrong because it's text and, right. and text is where irony goes to die and, and inflection and tone go to die. Uh, it's it's really brutal. It's really brutal to read that kind of stuff. It, it's it's like, you know, the best you can do sometimes is laugh about it. The best you can do is kind of parody who you think the people are that are that are writing it. But it gets even harder. And and this is something that I, I don't know if William does go through, but like, I would imagine that some of the comments that he reads are from people that. He, names he sees all the time in his comments. Well, and he, he does specifically... And that hurts even more. Yeah, he specifically calls out uh, the best, most painful twist of the knife is when somebody says the exact right thing that you suspected about your work 
anyway. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, normally I love your stuff, but this one feels like you didn't really know where you were headed and you just sort of phoned it in. And you're like, that's totally like, yeah, it's, it's brutal. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's not to say, um, I'm not saying it's, it's commenters responsibility to hold back. Uh, and it's, it's not his responsibility to have to read that stuff. And it's not even his responsibility to make stuff, but, but, but this is a platform that encourages that. Exactly. Boy, oh boy, if we could remake YouTube from scratch right now, because part of why YouTube is a success is because it allows anybody to jeer from the audience and feel like they're being heard. It puts the number of views on everything, that social proof right up on front street. It has that lightsaber bar of likes and dislikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, it is a brutal arena which is why it's so successful. And it's only when you wander into it and get far enough down the squid game that you realize just how dangerous this, 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 this is. And, and it's such an aspirational, uh, uh, position, you know, it, it if you look at, you know, when they when they survey kids on what they want to be when they grow up, they want to be a YouTuber or an astronaut or like a movie star. Like, yeah, it is on that same level for them. And even though we I mean, as creators, we have absolutely benefited greatly from the the digital and the Internet revolution by making it easier to record and 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 distribute video and, and podcasts and all that stuff. And I don't think that we've reckoned with how how close that puts everybody together right the the you can be on my phone if you tweet me uh overnight and i will be the first thing that you see and that's a lot of value that i really don't feel like i asked to give up and yet as a part of being someone who's on twitter and likes using twitter every day there's there's not that sep- it's hard to separate there we say we've told individual peoples that they should be brands and now they have to deal with the problems that brands can deal with because they're not an individual person uh that is uh very well spoken uh i just got a text uh oh should we do we need to go no 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 this is good news uh <clears throat> uh okay uh, uh a friend of ours just announced that he got booked at a certain venue. Hey! So he was calling to thank Bryce ah. for everything. He was so <laughs> complimentary, and be, and and uh, the reason he got the gig is because of the production quality. Oh, good! Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, it- uh, thank you for your resources <laughs> and a true, neutral yet warm audience to knock it out. I'm forever in your debt. <laughs> uh, how cool is that? That's very nice. I'm sure. I'm sure the specifics of who and where will be told I, I, over I'm sure the next few weeks. Most people already have figured out <laughs> what we're talking about, um, but, well, but, but 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 uh, I think that's all about to be public knowledge. But congratulations, Bryce! Hey. Thank you very much for everything yeah, you, you put into it. that. Hey, you know Commenting. what? Commenting. Uh, this is great. That's so great. <laughs> that's Expensive great. hat. <laughs> <laughs> is that a two hundred dollar hat? Uh, <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Uh, 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 beyond the commenting, William makes a point to talk about his subreddit. And this is something that I have thought a lot about with because I've been more into Reddit over the past year, two years. There is a very, very weird phenomenon when it comes to fan subreddits. Fan subreddits almost invariably tend to fall in to one of two molds. Either sycophantic tribalism to mm. an artist, a, a, a thing which is inherently not that interesting, but is always great for news when things happen and, and you want to, they were on, on the top. cover of this. There's an yeah. interview. Here's the thing that, you know, they tweeted this or the deleted, blah, 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 blah. Hey, these guys are talking trash about the so-and-so. Exactly. We, let's uh, go yeah. show them some force. Mm. Or, and this to me is where, William subreddit was, and uh, a lot of fan subreddits that I follow fall into the idea of criticism, that you have to kill the thing you love the most. Uh, it's really, really, really weird. I, 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 uh, uh, I, I, 
the, the example that pops to my mind is hearing Dan Harmon talk about how he can't bring himself to look at the Harmontown subreddit uh, because, because of exactly that. Yeah, but, and because people people are inquisitive. People want, if uh, m- much like you would talk about your favorite team or your favorite players or whatever, yeah. you would want to discuss it. Oh, you know, they seemed like they were off that day. They, oh, you know, but that they they is it just it was, me it's or just, right. did like uh, has it not been as good since blank? Right, but does secretly so and so hate the other one? <laughs> What's going on? And I don't think that this is an inherent. Uh, an inherent flaw as as much as something I think that we could would be innovative is a paradigm of making the internet less permanent. Um, Like, like for example, like Twitter has their Twitter blue thing that they're trying to sell people. It's like $3 a month. You get to save more bookmarks or something. There's really nothing to it, but it would be really, I think it would be an incredible service if they said, if you give us, if you pay for this, we will delete your tweets after a month, six months, whatever you want it. We will keep it so that your Twitter is ephemeral, probably the way that you intended that thought to be. Because you look at Reddit, Reddit is this huge archive of our reactions to news, links, everything yeah. else on the web. And it will live pretty much forever until there is a copyright reason to take it down. Here, here's where I tend to land on all of this. We want to find salvation in the tools, but the tools are us, and this is us. Like, if we if we have a problem with the ugliness that we see in our lives, if we have a problem with the ugliness that we see directed toward us, if we see the ugliness in how we react toward other people, we only have one thing to do, and that is to understand where that comes from and to try to make steps that 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 go further. Uh, uh, I think as creators, it does help. And I'm glad that William put out this video because it does help to say, hey, guys, look, I'm feeling really bummed about it. I, I, I think I can be, uh, uh, I am certainly somebody who uh, uh, I blame myself that there are times where I let jokes that bother me, I let memes that bother me inside of the community. I just kind of hoped that like hey these things would just kind of go away memes that you yourself have invited people <laughs> to to say about you and to you uh names to call you oh yeah no yeah i, you know, I told that story yeah, yeah, there, yeah there was like yeah. a consequence where where people would call me a failure for a week and the next thing you know on day three i'm like like you know like hey what's up you failure i'm like the hell did you say to me right right like, right right, uh, right uh that being said i do think that if this is about culture if this is about you giving an example uh, to your audience, then being honest with your audience at times is something that is necessary. At the end of the day, every organization winds up resembling its leader. And so the, if, if part of the, one, the, 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 the comments that hurt the most are the ones that seem to be uh, uh, realistic to the actual situation, then uh, uh, maybe those are you know, the more constructive variety, if they are just, you know, some of the ones that he says that are just hurtful or, or the ones that are speculative on, you know, we had a tragedy happen. Somebody raised a bunch of money for him on GoFundMe. He goes to Disneyland two weeks later and people are like, oh, way to blow all your GoFundMe money or whatever. Like that's, uh, uh, that adds up. It does add up, and being honest with your audience is important. Being audio, uh, being honest with yourself is important. That that you know there is a line where where bottling things up doesn't really uh, doesn't protect the franchise. It poisons the engine to the point where the engine wants to break down. Uh, and and as a content creator, the the way we make a living, the same way a singer sings, the same way that a a, a boxer boxes is by making stuff. Uh, so if we are not doing that, then it is upon us to provide self maintenance to do it. Doesn't mean that it's not a bad world out there. Doesn't mean that it's not a a a, a rough a rough existence. It absolutely is, and I feel for him. I, I honestly do. Uh, uh, but ultimately, I don't think that there is no there's no tool the, like, the, ad, like, like the admins like, will not save us. Well, and 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 even but, if I wanted to wish for a version of YouTube that shielded you from the ugliest things people said or or thought or sent towards you, 
uh, they would still find their way to you. And, 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 uh, we, we, um, cu- cu- couple of things I've, 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 I've now almost for a third time, uh, in fact, my pick will be, so you've been publicly shamed by, uh, by John Ronson is so good. Um, uh, the internet, uh, hasn't figured out, ha- has not yet learned how to accept an apology. Uh, the internet has not yet figured out how to, um, have civil discourse, uh, in two ways, uh, with, in a highly asymmetrical situation. Uh, but it, uh, is, I mean, is it, is it hopeless? I, I mean, if, no, if we can say that, if we're saying not. that the platforms are not, uh, don't have any, have any hand in this or that they can't be changed or that there, we can't find a new, pa- I mean, I mean. I, I, it's, uh, it's not YouTube and Facebook's world to decide. And I don't uh, want to sit here and say that, 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 that they can't be changed and they are never going they anywhere. They can be changed. They can be changed. We can change them. We can, uh, uh, I, now, can we spiritually, quote unquote, fix them? That's the, that is what I think is, what's is, easier is too is, far to, too, too far to, to expect. Is uh, it easier to fix, to fix YouTube or to fix humanity? Uh, this is, the, this is literally, the question for which we have all wrestled with from the moment we began interacting with each other. Sure. Like there, there, there has never been a lack of reason for us to be cruel to each other. Uh, we have found a new way to do it. I don't feel that there is a way that we can admin our way out of this. What, uh, what, but, but we, all we can do is live, live our own lives and try to be nicer to others. I mean, the way the way the the uh, super successful, super wealthy do is they hire human beings to uh, filter things to them. eat it, uh, mm-hmm. to and, eat it, and, eat it, and regurgitate it back to them. Uh, Which and, is and and maybe get that, it, Greg. Maybe get that's it, Greg. Maybe that's the, so the solution. The internet's big, and obviously, I couldn't read it all. You know, maybe that, that's a barrier to that maybe, is a barrier to entry. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe that's uh, something that somebody's going to come up with where for 20 bucks a month, you will get a curated experience. You will get like, if, if you want to know your in general reputation, you'll get uh, a, a light that goes anywhere from red to yellow to green. And that's about it. And then beyond that, uh, you'll experience a filtered reality. And maybe, maybe that's the healthiest thing we can hope for. I don't know. I mean, and I don't want to be all black mirror about it, but like, then we're going to fixate on, the red, the green, and the yellow, and 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 we're gonna want to disable it so we can see what people are actually saying. And as like here, here, okay, here's here's a here's a scenario, right? Uh, let's say you are a, you are a different person. You have a a YouTube channel that is successful, whatever amount you want it to be. Theoretically, uh, would you, um, in in a similar situation face, facing something like this, would you say turn off the comments on YouTube? Knowing that you can still, ha- there will still be conversation, probably somewhere else. There will be forums that you can control that are better designed for this, like Discord or a Facebook group or a, a hell, a, 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 an email list, something that I, I, I only, I only, I, I think, I think about, I think, have, 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 I think have YouTube bold, comments outlive their usefulness. Yeah. Like, if, I, I think if you turn them a, off, would you, bold, be, would you do that? I, I think a bold person with the heart of a leader might uh, try something exactly like that. And just, just say, if you would like to talk about it, please join our community. Here's where it is. Now, uh, I, uh, not being a primarily YouTube guy, I would, I would still say my first guess would be, well, wait a minute, hold on. How much does commenting affect the algorithm today? Uh, if, if YouTube could come out and promise and make a 20 year pledge, Comments <laughs> will no longer drive any part of the algorithm signed in blood. Uh, Doug Google. I mean, then, then maybe you could begin to think about whether or not you trust Google. Yeah. Because uh, uh, the other part of it is that as long as that might be in that mysterious algorithm on what drives that auto recommendation, then you can't afford to turn off comments. It seems like something the admins could change. And maybe that works. And maybe that no, helps just a little bit. And maybe, maybe the world is a little less cruel because of it. I uh-huh. don't think it would be the solve to what he is saying. I think that you are going, sure. you're, you are going to find it. Uh, 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 like, yes, 
I'm not saying that we shouldn't always be working to make our platforms better. I do believe that they can always be better. I do believe that they can be optimized, and I do believe that that meta shifts. So don't don't take it uh, for me to say that it's that 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 you know we can't make Twitter better, we can't make YouTube better, we can't make Discord better. Of and I don't mean to can. crucify you on that. I'm, no, no, no. You know, uh, all I'm saying is that the core problem is a problem as old as humanity. Hmm. Well. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to beat that. Yeah. I, 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 um, <laughs> uh, so we'll have, we'll, once again, we've got the link to the William Osmond video. Um, yeah, that's so you've been publicly shamed, I think is, is a very appropriate pick. Um, if, if we got any other picks, I think otherwise we can, we can wrap it up. Um, yeah, Squid Game. Squid game. I, like, I like that Squid Game. Finished it. Finished the Squid Game. Nice. Boy, these games, baby. They're squidding around. Dubs or subs? Oh yeah, Are you, did you dub it or sub it? Dub it. Yeah. A dub is all right. Oh wait, no, no, no. Sorry, yeah. no, no. Sub, 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 sub. Uh, I read really? It. I read it. Yeah. Oh, I read okay. it. Okay. I like I like hearing them. I like because I I, I I keep trying to figure out whether or not I like their acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that'll do it here for the After Things podcast today for Justin and Brian. I've been Bryce. It's been after. Mm. That hat though. <laughs> Dig that hat. <laughs> All right. Hey, good conversation. That yeah, was a lot dude, of fun. Thank good. you, everybody. We are going to go offline, and we will be back in about two and a half hours for Cord Killers, the Cord, the Cord Killers podcast. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and yeah, until then, have a good rest of your Monday. Mm. Bye. Love you. Bye.